With permission, Mr Speaker, I will answer questions 7, 12 and 15 together. One person without a home is one too many. That is why we have increased central funding for homelessness to £139 million over this Parliament and protected council homelessness prevention funding, totalling £315 million by 2020. Sir Edward Lee. Uh, supporting homeless people will require real resources given to real people, such as £115 million promised to the homelessness charity uh, Global, uh, Caritas Anchor House. But in this context, may I encourage the Minister, as he comes into his new responsibilities, indeed the Secretary of State, to avoid just changing the deck chairs in different parts of Whitehall? And in this context, will he please ditch his policy or that of his predecessor to impose an elected mayor on Lincolnshire? Well, I'm sure my right honourable friend, the Secretary of State, has heard about his uh, question around the uh, potential or not of an elected mayor in Lincolnshire. In regard to uh, homelessness, it is always good to hear about charities as the one my honourable friend mentioned in relation to how they're uh, using innovative ways to tackle uh, old problems. Uh, providing support to help people recover from homelessness is extremely important and it's absolutely key that we help people in that position start to rebuild their lives. That's why we're investing £20 million in tackling rough sleeping and £100 million into move-on accommodation from hostels and refuges. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, can my right honourable friend, honourable friend tell the House if he's generally supportive of the No Second Night Out service and how he intends to ensure that it is available in all local authority areas? No. I can tell my honourable friend that we are absolutely supportive of the No Second Night Out approach, which my department rolled out nationally in the last Parliament. I absolutely want to build on the success of this initiative, our new 10 million rough sleeping fund will scale up ways in which we can prevent and reduce rough sleeping. Uh, it will also go further, building on the successful approaches of no second night out and indeed no first night out because it's best if we can prevent people uh, being on the streets at all. I can uh, say to my honourable friend that details of this programme and the bidding round will be announced shortly. Quince. Uh, Beacon House is a wonderful charity supporting the homeless in Colchester. What further support can the Minister give to charities, local charities, up and down this country, like Beacon House, in their work to tackle homelessness? My honourable uh, friend makes a very, very good point. Charities play an extremely valuable part in the fight against homelessness. I know my honourable friend has taken part in a sleep out to raise money for Beacon House, which this department has also supported financially. Uh, I do chair a round table with Chief Executive a number of these vital homelessness charities to discuss what more can be done. Uh, the information that we have gathered at these meetings feeds directly into the Ministerial Working Group, which I also chair. Mr Barry Sherman. Speaker, the Minister is a fair-minded chap, but uh, you'll know it's a complex problem of homelessness. First of all, it's, but there is a link, he'll admit, there's a link between the lack of affordable housing in our major cities, both in terms of rented and to buy, and also many people that we see on the streets of London and in Yorkshire are people on the mental health spectrum who need assistance and help and can't get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Honourable Gentleman makes extremely fair points and that's why we're investing £1.6 billion over this Parliament to deliver an additional 100,000 homes for affordable rent. Uh, taking his point about mental health, that's an extremely well-made point and that's why I chair a ministerial working group and I'm working with other departments and ministers in other departments to make sure that we, we, we make sure that the links between things such as uh, mental health issues, drink and drug dependency are dealt with across government uh, because it's not just a housing issue. Feria. Thank you Mr Speaker. According to the Combined Homelessness and Information Network database, 8,096 people slept rough at some point in London during 2015-16. This represented an increase of 7% from the previous year. With an ever-growing housing crisis in the city, when is the government going to take action and learn lessons from the different approaches taken by the devolved nations? 
Well, as I said uh, in my answer to the previous question, this is not just a housing issue and therefore we're working across uh, government to try and uh, resolve these issues. Uh, we are putting in a significant amount of money, £139 million pounds, uh, during this spending review period into this important issue and that includes £10 million pounds to scale up initiatives to prevent and reduce rough sleeping, which is extremely important, and £10 million pounds, uh, to uh, put into uh, an upgraded social impact bond which had a significant amount of success during the last Parliament. Night. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Following the examination by the Communities and Local Government Select Committee, of which I'm a member, of homelessness policy and the private members' bill from my humble friend for Harrow East, would the Minister look into an approach where local authorities in England are specifically measured for their responsibility to homelessness? I thank my honourable friend. Uh, we are well aware that the Select Committee is due to report, uh, publish its report uh, very shortly. Uh, whilst we have not had sight of that report yet, I am very keen to see the Committee's uh, recommendations and how it can help shape our programme of work. Uh, we want to ensure that local authorities have the tools that they need to put prevention absolutely at the heart uh, of uh, tackling homelessness. Good data and measurement are vital in relation to that prevention and that is why we are currently looking at how the data is collected and used to support prevention uh, so that we can find those at risk of becoming homeless far earlier than we do now.